Hey family, it's Pastor Carrie here and welcome to our 15 minutes of daily inspiration. Listen, I pray that you all are blessed that your week has started off great and I'm just thrilled that you are always here with me. Listen, on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Jamal H. Bryan, welcome to this moment and your entire New Birth family welcomes you. We are always so glad that you're here. If you've not shared this, y'all know what I'm gonna tell you. I want you to share it. I want you to like it. Um, I want you to comment on it. Let me know if this is something that blesses you if you're inspired by it and it causes you to move to your next level. Listen, today I want to talk about make that move. Last week we talked about switching lanes. This week I want to talk about make that move. Over the course of the next several weeks you all know I'm going to be really pushing you in these areas of transition while we are in Lent so that you are able to make that move. Listen, right now I'm coming to you live, right, from my hometown of Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, this week, you'll get an opportunity to learn a little bit more about who I am, where I come from, who my people are. I know some of y'all have been like, who is this lady? Where she come from? Well, this week, you'll get a chance to learn more about me as New Birth travels here for our home invasion tour. Listen, I often say that Las Vegas raised me, which is the full truth, uh, and Atlanta made me. I was born and raised here in Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, uh, where a majority of my life was spent on the west side of town. That's where I grew up. That's where I was reared. You know, I was raised by a hardworking single mother um, who still works to this day, along with my little brother who still lives in the city. All of my family uh, and friends still live in Las Vegas. And although our life was tough and tough to make it light, um, although our life was really hard on many levels, the truth is, y'all, I wouldn't trade any of my experiences, anything that I had to go through because it made me the woman that I am today. I grew up in a city, as you all know, where gambling is normal. Um, I grew up in a city where for the most part, for many people, for many years, prostitution was normal. Um, drug addiction was normal. You saw it on corners. You saw it on many levels. It was directly impacted uh, by, I was impacted by it by people in my family who suffered addition. addiction. And so this was normal. Gangs was normal. Uh, the, uh, a city rich with mob history was normal. Uh, and the truth is, given everything that I saw happening around me, I could have become a part of all of those things. Those things could have become the norm for my life. But the truth of the matter is, I knew very early in life that there was more for me. And while Las Vegas is known in some ways for many of the things that I mentioned above, can I tell you my city is beautiful? Can I tell you that it is an amazing place where hardworking people live? Good people live here who get up each and every day uh, in pursuit of providing a good life for themselves and for their families and for their friends. And I'm honored to have come from um, this place. I grew up, listen y'all, in a community that embraced my gifts. I grew up in a community that, that taught me how to give, that taught me how to serve, that taught me how to yield myself and my gifts and talents to the people around me. You know, one of the hardest things that I ever had to do in my life was to leave my family and to leave the city that I love so much. Uh, as a high school student, uh, then a part of the Martin Luther King Jr. Youth Committee based here in Las Vegas, you know, I scrapped up, I don't know how me and my mom did it, but we scrapped up enough money, which is about $500 for me to attend my first college tour that brought me to Atlanta. I immediately fell in love with Atlanta and all that it had to offer. I was mesmerized at the time. I also fell in love with dear old Morris Brown College, uh, where I knew that someday I wanted to attend, that it would be a part of my destiny and my purpose. When I returned home from that college tour, even as a teenager, can I tell you, I heard the voice of the Lord so clearly. I was acquainted early with the, the voice of the Lord. I accepted Christ when I was seven years old and so I knew when God was speaking and I heard the Lord telling me when I got home that I have more for you, that there is more in store for you. He said this, but you will have to go. You will have to leave your home for I have greater for you. Initially, I thought, how in the world is this possible? Could I really 
be hearing God clearly. Nobody in my immediate family had gone to college, definitely not a way to college. Um, how would we pay for it? You know, we don't have it. We don't have a lot of money. We don't really have any money. You know, maybe I should stay here um, at home and simply work. Maybe I should do that. Um, what if I fail? What if I get down there and it doesn't work out? What if I make huge mistakes? All of these questions were really going through my mind. They really began to flood my young mind at the time and then all hell broke loose the moment that I made the decision that I would go that I would just figure it out that I would leave the city and the people that I loved the summer leading up to me leaving my home my fam my family was in financial turmoil to the point where our home was being foreclosed um, I didn't have any resources to leave for school there were no big boxes um, for me being shipped to my dorm with bedding and supplies. Some of these kids get so many beautiful things. Listen, I didn't have any of that. I didn't have anything to really get me started. There was no big scholarship check that I took away with me. Not even, I didn't even have a family member to go with me to check me in and get me settled in this new place because my mom had to work. But the week that I was leaving, all that I had was I had to sneak into our home that had been foreclosed so that I could pull clothes out. Some of the clothes that I had left there pack those clothes to take with me for college. So you know what I had when I, I left my home, when I left Las Vegas, I had an airline ticket. I had two duffel bags that I bought at the swap meet, y'all don't even hear me, to put my clothes in. Um, the blessing of my mother, um, my mentors, and the people that loved me in my community. And I had the voice of the Lord telling me to go. The truth is I was scared to death and I didn't know how I would make it. I had no plan B. There was no other option for me. I literally just had the vision that God gave me for my life. And I was reminded of this when I came back to Vegas this week um, for filming to share with you. And I thought as much as I loved my city, as much as I loved my family, where would I be if I never listened to the voice of the Lord? As difficult as it was for me to leave, even though I knew that my mom wanted me to go with tears streaming down her face with my brother being so mad that I was leaving I knew that I had to go but where would I be if I didn't obey the voice of the Lord telling me to go how would my life yeah how would my life have fared out if I didn't obey get on that plane even in the middle of turmoil in my family's life and leave many of you right now if you tell the truth you are are honestly at the same crossroads that I was facing as a young person. Listen, the Lord has spoken to you telling you it's time to go. The Lord has spoken to you telling you it's time to move. The Lord has spoken to you telling you it's time to get up. He's spoken to you telling you it's time to transition. The time is now. Greater I have for you, says the Lord. More I have for you, says the Lord. But many of you are making the same excuses that I made. Many of you are thinking, how is this going to work? I can't do it. I'm not equipped for it. I've, I've been the first person to do this in my family it can't be done. But today I want to remind you that the Father, yeah, he always makes good on his word. Yeah. I want to remind you that when you obey the voice of the Lord, I want to, I want to be an example to you that when you obey the voice of the Lord, that the Father will always bless you. The Father will always sustain you and the Father will always keep you because you are following his directive. As I came back home to my city, um, this week, I am reminded of Abraham in Genesis 12 and 1. And that verse says, Then the Lord said to Abraham, The Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country, yeah, your people and your father's house to a land I will show you. Then he goes on to say, Listen, I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Listen, when I begin to think about this within the context even of my own life, listen, when Abraham received the word of the Lord. He wasn't a teenager like me at the time, but the truth is he was very much middle-aged. For his era, 
era, he was about 75 years old. Abraham was married, he was settled, he was already wealthy, and you can say for the most part, he had the creature comforts of his life. I can imagine that outside of Sarah being able to provide him children, that he was very content with where he was. Then the voice of the Lord comes to him telling him to go. How many times have you said, Lord, I'm content with where I am. I, you know, I'm settled. It might not be everything that I want it to be, but everything's all right. I, I, I don't need to really move. I don't need to really make any adjustments. I've done all that I need to do. For some of you, you might be retired. For those of you, you might be nearing retirement. Other of you, you're working, but you are making plans for uh, when you finish working. You're just kind of in a space where maybe things are okay. But then in the middle of that space, how many times have you heard the voice of the Lord telling you to do something that turns your comfort completely upside down? The word of the Lord came to Abraham telling him, number one, go. The Lord said, get up and I want you to go. I want you to get some movement behind you. I want you to leave this place that you are at. He tells him, leave your country. I want you to leave the place that you were born. I want you to leave the place that shaped and molded you. I want you to leave the place where you know everything, where you're comfortable with everything. The Lord tells him to leave his country. Then the Lord says, not only leave your country, but I want you to leave your family. I want you to leave your people, your extended people, the people that make you comfortable, the people who you can go down the street and talk to. I want you to get up and leave those people. They then he says, I want you to leave your father's house. I want you to leave the place where you have established a name, where you carry the name of, and the lineage of your father. I want you to leave that place. I want you to leave the place that your identity, your birthright, your natural birthright is connected to. I want you to leave that place. Listen, essentially the Lord was asking Abraham to leave every single thing he knew, everything his name was tied to, everything his hands were tied to, everything his heart was tied to. The Lord was asking Abraham to leave. How many times, yeah, has the Lord spoke to you and said, get up and go. And I want you to leave everything that you think you know. I want you to leave the success that is attached to you, that's attached to your family. I want you to leave this place that you are comfortable. I want you to leave the things that you can identify with. And listen, not only only do I want you to go, I want you to get up and go to the place that I'll send you. I'm not even really giving you any full details about where I want you to go because that's just like God. It's just like God to give you a part of a word and not give you the full word because we know that even when we prophesy, we prophesy in, in parts. So the Father will give you a piece of it to see whether or not you will obey that piece of it. Get up and move and move on to the next thing that he has called you to do without giving you everything every single detail. So listen, the Lord has told you to do this and you are sitting going, oh my goodness, how in the world is this gonna happen? Listen, what we find interesting, even about, about what was happening in Abraham's life at the time, even in my life, my family was uh, suffering financial turmoil, but the place that Abraham lived in had become idolatrous. The place that he lived in was a place that did not honor God. And so the Lord was asking him to remove himself. Yeah. Yeah. Everything that was attached to that place, every every low thinking thing, every thought, every action that was attached to his home, the people that were attached to it, the father was telling him to leave. Why? Because the Lord knew that there was more in store for Abram. He knew that there was more that he had for him. He knew the path that he had already laid out for him and he wanted him to go. Listen, what I love about this passage is that every time the Lord asks you to leave a thing, can I tell you something? Can I confirm something for you today? That he is always gonna replace it with something greater. He's never gonna ask you to make a sacrifice for him and not give you more than what you ever sacrificed. What I love is that when you continue 
continue to read Genesis chapter 12, the Bible tells us that the father says to Abraham, I will make thee a great nation. So you mean to tell me that the Lord tells him to leave a nation only to turn around and then tell him, not that I'm gonna give you a great nation, glory to God. He says, I'm gonna make you a great nation. You will be a nation. I asked you to leave one thing, but I'm making you bigger than what I even asked you to leave. And so God took him from his own people and he promised him to make him a head of another people. God will call you out of a thing because he's getting ready to make you ruler of a larger thing. Listen, he then goes on to say, I will bless thee. Listen, I will bless thee. And we know that when we read about the life of Abraham, he had a life that was filled with fruit. He had a life that was fruitful. Listen, your blessings are attached to your ability to leave, your ability to obey more than you have ever seen God do before. He said, leave thy father's house. Listen, and I'm going to give you the, uh, a father's blessing. Listen, not only am I asking you to leave your father's house, but let me tell you something. I'm giving you a father's blessing. I'm anointing you as a father in a way where you will be a father of many nations, many generations. That's what you are going to be. Listen, you are going to be better than that of your progenitors. This is what I've called you to be. Then he says, listen, I, I am going to make your name great. Listen, you left your, you left your nation. You left, you, you, you left your people and all of the things that were attached to you that you love. And then you left your father's house. Glory to God. The place whereby your name was established. And I, I love God because he, he will ask you to leave a thing. Here we go again. So that he can give you something greater. He asks Abram to leave and then to leave his father's house and then tells him, I will make your name great. By deserting his, his, his country, his nation, even his father's house, he lost his name there. Everything tied to him was there. But the Lord then tells him, I'm going to make your name great. Listen, I, I don't know where you might be in your life. I don't know what you might be facing, but I know that the spirit of the Lord has been speaking to you, telling you that it's time to move, telling you that it's time to transition, telling you that it's time to get that new house, telling you that it's time to get boxes so that you can move to that new city or move across the city, telling you that it's time to, to look for another position, telling you that it's time to launch that job, whatever it is, the Lord has been speaking to you and I wanna to come to you to confirm prophetically that you are hearing correctly the voice of the Lord, but it is now your job to move and obey. There's gonna be some fear. There might even be some trepidation, but can I tell you, the hand of the Lord is on you. Just the same way the hand of the Lord was on me when I was a child and I left everything I knew to go to a place that I knew nothing about, the Lord's hand is on you. The favor of the Lord is with you. He is already affirmed you. He has already confirmed what he has said to you. And your only duty during this time is to obey and to go. It may be daunting. It might be confusing. It might be rushed. Listen, it might, it might be rough. All of those things, everything that you can think about, it's probably legitimately right. But can I tell you that what the Lord has said to you and what the Lord has for you supersedes any negative thought that you can have about this transition. So I'm challenging you. There is a blessing of the Lord in your obedience and your ability to hear and move according to the voice of the Lord. Can I tell you again, there is nothing that you can sacrifice in obedience to God that the Father will not honor. And I believe and I declare that he is going to return everything you, you forsook for him a hundredfold. And you will see it now. Not only will you see it, but just like Abraham, your children will see it. Your children's children's children will see it. And generations to come will be honored because you did something that you never did before. You got up, you did what the Lord said, you went and the answer for you was to go, you accepted it and you moved. Listen, I pray that as you move, that you feel the blessings of the Lord, you experience the blessings of the Lord, that you are blessed going in, that you are blessed coming out, that your fields are blessed, that your barns are full, hallelujah, and that your cup, glory to God, runneth over
over because you have done what the Lord has said. Everything in expansion connected to your life is connected to your go. Make that move and watch and see what the Lord does for you in this season of your life. Listen, I pray that today that you are blessed. I'm looking forward to you experiencing what my life has been like here. And I look forward to learning more about your testimonies and what happened when you went and bought them boxes. What happened when you yielded to the voice of the Lord? You operated in obedience and you went. Listen, if you want to sow a seed right now, you can do that right at this moment. Listen, you might say, Pastor, I want to sow into this moment of making that move in my life. You can view the prompts below that will allow you to do so. And if you want to join, if you want to become a part of a community of faith, I tell you guys this all of the time, that's going to push you that's gonna, gonna challenge you to that next level. This is the place. You've been visiting, you've been sneaking in on these 15 minute daily inspirations. Now it's time to become family. Now it's time to get connected. Now it's time to plant yourself. Now it's time to, to put some stake in the ground in a community that loves you. Listen, on behalf of myself uh, and our senior pastor, your entire New Birth family, we truly love you. We're rooting for you. We are praying for you relentlessly because we know that the Lord has more in store for you and you will be blessed when you make the decision to go. Have a wonderful rest of your day.